y'all. Welcome to Fistful of Dice. Today I'm going to be prepping a uh, session for my fiance and I, a little one-on-one uh, -on -one sort of one-off session that we're going to be playing in my new campaign setting of Eschia, which is uh, sort of an ancient Greek-inspired setting. Um, and since I'm going to be doing the prep here uh, just really quickly in the morning and I don't really have a good idea of what we're going to do just yet, I thought it might be a good idea to film the process edit it together and give you guys a glimpse into what my prepping process looks like and what sort of tools I bring to that process. So I'm hoping this is going to be a helpful look into um, some quick sort of improv DM prep and uh, we'll give you guys some tools that you can use to, uh, to better make your uh, prep more rewarding and more efficient. So uh, anyway guys, enjoy. Here we go. Okay, so I have a video on my channel, it's an earlier video, it's probably from about a year and a half or two years ago, where I sort of explain my preparation process um, by showing you the materials that I have. So in that case, it was a, um, a bunch of 3 by 5 note cards with some notes written on them. Now, in that instance, the prep was already done, um, and I just kind of explained how I did it. But, it, but this video, I'm going to be kind of just coming up with stuff on the fly. I really have... No idea what we're going to do today, except for that um, a chimera is going to be involved. So I want um, my fiance's character uh, to fight the chimera. Uh, this is a, like I was explaining, kind of an ancient Greek uh, inspired campaign. Uh, the heroes of this land are known as paragons, and they um, are a little bit higher powered than your typical D&D &D character. They start play uh, at level 8. Um, they, when they roll their stats, they ignore rolls of one, so um, their stats are going to be st statistically a little bit higher, and they also get a few other abilities um, that kind of give them a one-up over uh, other characters of a similar level. So um, throwing some tougher enemies like, uh, like a Chimera at her, even though she's going to be on her own with a couple of NPCs in the party, um, should be a good challenge, I think. Uh, and a good way to sort of test the bounds of the campaign setting because I haven't done a whole lot of testing in it yet. So um, <clears throat> so what are the tools here that I'm working with? Well, you know, even though my prep process is very similar every time I do it, sometimes I use different tools. Sometimes I will type out my notes um, in a Word document. Sometimes I will use a piece of graph paper and I will I will draw a map and, and point out the different locations and encounters and NPCs that we're going to be coming up against. Sometimes I will use the old um, Mike Shea 3x5 Lazy Dungeon Master method. That That's usually the one that I, that I use the most and get the most mileage out of. But I use what works at the time. Don't be afraid to be malleable in your process. Change things up. Be adaptable. You shouldn't have one set way that you prep for a game. You know, you should you should you have tools at your disposal and processes that you use that work for <clears throat> for multiple applications. So, you know, a good writer doesn't just have the one place that they go and write. A good dungeon master doesn't just have the one way that they prep. Does that make sense? So. Um, the first thing I like to do when I'm starting out with prep is I like to give myself a little bit of inspiration. And um, this might be something as simple as uh, rolling some tables in the Dungeon Master's Guide, um, looking up some ideas online of sample adventures, looking at a pre-written module, uh, delving into my, uh, my little notebook of um, <clears throat> notes and encounter ideas here, just kind of flipping through that to find some ideas that I may have stored Today, I'm going to be using uh, one of my favorite tools here that um, I get a lot of use out of, and that is Rory's Story Cubes. Now, Rory's Story Cubes are these little six-sided dice that have symbols on them, and I've, t I've talked about these before, but I've got a big old bag of them here. I have a couple different sets, and what I like to do is I like to just grab a handful of these. I like to give them a little roll and use the images to try and inspire myself. Okay, so the images I have here are, it looks like a sun either rising or setting on the horizon, a treasure chest with uh, like glowy loot coming out of it, and a crescent moon. So right there, I'm getting some ideas for this session. I see, I see the sun and the moon. 
and then I see this treasure chest. So I give that a few minutes. I maybe jot down some ideas of uh, what immediately springs to mind. And I use these images as kind of a jumping off point uh, for the session planning, OK? All right. So I took a couple minutes and just kind of jotted down some thoughts here. I, I don't know if my webcam is going to focus here. but. Um, so with the treasure chest, I was kind of thinking uh, a rare magical item or artifact in a magically sealed chest. With the crescent moon, I actually went a little bit different route with it. And because this is an ancient Greek inspired, inspired campaign and uses the Greek Pantheon, I decided to involve Selene, goddess of the moon, in some fashion in this session. Maybe the, the artifact um, that uh, my fiance's character, whose, whose name is Alkaya, by the way, Alkaya, uh, will be going after. Uh, might be a, an artifact of Selene. And um, with this setting or rising sun here, you know, Selene is the goddess of the moon. She, she rides across the sky in her chariot. Um, so I was thinking, uh, you know, the chest has to be open as the sun sets. Like, it has to be opened during the time when Selene would actually be active, which is, you know, at, at nightfall as the, when the sun sets. So those are kind of the three ideas I'm getting from there. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do with this session, and you, you want to do this with every session, but especially now because it is a one-on-one -on -one campaign, there is only one player, I'm wanting to include things in the session that are going to be personally, uh, or, or give the character of Alkaya a personal stake in the session. I want to involve her background, her motivations, you know, at least a little bit in this session, just so she has a little bit of, like I was saying, personal stake in it. So Alkaya is a Xanacarian elf, and the Xanacarians are like the Amazons. Um, they are a matriarchal society um, who are a, a, a tribe of, of, of very skilled primal warriors. Um, they live on this untamed jungle island called Xanacar, and, um, <clears throat> you know, are... Uh, quite fearsome in combat. So Alkaya is what's known as an asp, and the asps are the uh, the elite female warriors of the Xanacarian elves. So, um, and what her background involves is, um, you know, she's incredibly loyal to the island of Xanacar. But I'm really sorry if you can hear my washing machine going; it's so loud, and it's right on the other side of the wall. Um, I didn't think about the fact that I was going to be filming videos when I started laundry this morning. But anyway, so she, her ideal uh, on her character sheet is uh, basically that her homeland is all that matters. She is fighting for her homeland. Everything she does is in the glory to her homeland. Um, her bond is camaraderie. You know, she thrives on having allies and comrades, and she would do anything for her friends. Um, her flaw is uh, that she pretty much has monster PTSD. She has, you know, some a little bit of uh, some bad memories, some mental scars involving some sort of monster. Whether or not that monster is a chimera, I'm not sure. You know, this is just a one-off session. I'm not sure if I want to if I want to pull out, you know, uh, the PTSD card <laughs> right away, but it does give me something to use in the session if I want. All right. So now I've got my three sort of elements of this session. The, the, these are the pillars of the session, so to speak. These are the three things I would like to include. I'm going to do something a little different here, and I'm actually going to start at the end of the session. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. I've got my three ideas. I'm going to start where I think the session is going to end, which is obviously wherever the, the chest is and most likely the encounter with the chimera. So what is this location going to be? I'm not sure. Why don't we use our story cubes again here to try to get an idea of what this location might be. All right, so the three images that I rolled are a cave, a tower, and a helmet. So what I'm getting here is um, looks like a cave with stairs leading down. There's a tower here, which makes me think of a stronghold and a helmet. So here's what I'm thinking. In the background of my world, there is a, um, 
uh, a race known as the Katikti. And the Katikti are actually orcs. And what, the, what these Katikti orcs did is <clears throat> thousands of years ago, um, before the Eschians had metal, before they had cities, um, before they had any sort of organized government of any kind or, or, or uh, legions at their command, the orcs swept down from the north, wielding metal and magic, and basically brought the people of Estia to heal. So what I'm thinking of doing here is um, having whatever location or dungeon um, that uh, Alkaya ends up going to being a former like stronghold or armory of the Katakti uh, occupiers. So that gives me kind of a feel for, you know, what this little mini dungeon is going to be like and what sort of, um, you know, dressings I can give the dungeon and stuff like that. So, uh, so this final location is going to be the Katakti Stronghold. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of set that aside for now as I as I build the adventure. And I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. Now I need um, a starting location and kind of an intermediary location as well. So for the starting location, I want her to start in some sort of village or homestead or city or town, some sort of civilized place. So I'm again going to grab three of the Rory story cubes. Now again, y y you don't need story cubes. You can use anything at your disposal to kickstart those creative juices. You know, if you already have an idea in mind, use that. Um, you know, if you've got some modules you can read through, use those. The Dungeon Master's Guide here has awesome role tables for things like settlements and NPCs and things like that, and even adventures and dungeons. So this is just one tool that I use. And this just happens to be the tool that's working for me today. You have to use what works for you. So gears, a plane, and a magnifying glass. So here's what instantly I know what I'm doing. The gnomes in uh, Eschia, they're known as the Granazi. And the Granazi are the engineers of the world. They are the builders of the aqueducts, the roads. Um, they utilize steam power, much as the ancient Greeks did. So with the gears... This is instantly, I'm thinking, it's a uh, Granazi settlement. There are going to be lots of gnomes here. The plane, I'm thinking travel of some kind. Perhaps this settlement is has some sort of um, experimental mass transit. Does that make sense? Some sort of railway or um, steam-powered cart, something like that. Something experimental. Um, something that would allow people to travel very quickly. So that's two very cool ideas there. And then a magnifying glass, which, you know, makes me think that, um, you know, maybe uh, this is a place of, of research. Um, perhaps there is a uh, an investigator here. Um, you know, it, it kind of gives me an idea for perhaps a character here. You know, maybe there's some sort of um, a researcher or scholar here that, um, that uh, Alkaya is going to interact with. But in any case, so our first location here is going to be the Granazi settlement. Okay, and again, I'm just going to kind of set that aside here uh, that I'm going to build upon to basically create the framework of an adventure, of a dungeon, of an encounter, and from there kind of improv everything else that I don't have prepped. I want to leave myself and my player plenty of room to create together. I don't want to map out every single instance of this session, every single thing that's going to happen, every single possible route and direction, because I want to leave uh, room for creativity on behalf of both my player and myself. I want the path to deviate, okay? That is essential to improving your improvisational skills as a DM. You need to let the session deviate, and that is just so, so, so important. Don't get so attached to your ideas that you're unwilling to deviate from them. Now, I want some kind of intermediary uh, location here. So I'm going to grab, again, the Rory Story Cubes. And we've got a crab, a house, and what looks like a sick person. 
very interesting. So what I'm thinking here is a homestead, so some sort of um, single house, uh, sort of uh, you know off the beaten path, away from any sort of walled settlement. Somebody is sick, maybe uh, there's a you know some sort of sickness going around. The crab is what's stumping me. Now what I could do with this is I could, you know, I don't want to get too hung up on the image. I want to go to whatever happens first. What it, what occurs to me first when I see this crab? is something on the water. So it doesn't necessarily involve a crab, a giant enemy crab. Um, you know, this might uh, inspire me to do something with the location. It might inspire me to create an NPC, a monster, whatever. So what I'm thinking is a river homestead. So a house on the river with a sick person, OK? So I have my three little locations here. I've got the Granazi settlement where she's going to start out, a river homestead, which is a kind of an intermediary uh, location, maybe, you know, traveling in between the settlement and the stronghold. And I've got the stronghold, which is kind of the, the dungeon or the, the final, uh, you know, encounter of the session. So now I've got my three locations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use these three note cards and these three note cards alone to build the session. Um, I kind of switch it up sometimes. Sometimes I will have, you know, three locations. And then within those locations, I'll have a couple different uh, cards with NPCs, adventure hooks, things like that. Because this is a one-off session, I am not going to over prep. I am not going to uh, prep information that is not vital to the session. I want to be able to improv. I want to be able to be creative and see where this is going to go. So these three, this is the space I have, not front and back. I have these lines with which to build the session. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, build the stronghold, the final, the the final uh, location that Alkaya is going to be visiting, and. What this allows me to do is, because I'm starting from the end and working my way back, is I have an idea of what's going to be involved in the final encounter, in the final location, and so I can kind of foreshadow it and leave clues earlier on in the session if I, if I, if I need to. To kind of pointer, you know, in a certain direction or simply use the narrative technique of foreshadowing and make the, the session feel more cohesive and, uh, and coherent. So um, right away, I know I want a chimera. Okay, I want to include this creature. That was one of my uh, one of my wishes going into this session. So Chimera, a magically sealed chest, which can only be opened at sundown. And how am I going to clue her into that? Well, there's going to be a crescent moon symbol on the chest, which, you know, with a with a history check or a religion check or, you know, simply just thinking about it, she would surmise, "Oh, that's the symbol of Selene." And she what she would know about Selene is that, you know, Selene only uh, arrives in the world at sundown. So that might give her a little clue into what she what she needs to do. So those are the two things here. Now I'm also going to put um, another element that I want in this stronghold is um, remnants of Katakti occupation which is an, uh, probably the defining event of the campaign setting of Eshtia thus far. It is what united the people of Eshtia, created the common language, um, helped them to discover the golden pantheon, you know, their pantheon of, of divines, um, and really led to uh, the region becoming prosperous and wealthy. <clears throat> and it's also something, it's, it's a dark uh, presence in their past. You know, the, this occupation... Um, 
you know, it was enslavement, it was it was unjust rule. Um, and so having some some remnants of that occupation, you know, some some weapons, some armor, um, some, you know, if she maybe she'll come across, you know, some murals or some scrolls, you know, describing the occupation and stuff like that, it allows me to kind of um, give the player a little bit more lore about the world and give them a context for for what they're doing. Now, the other thing I'd like to do here is I'd like to add maybe a couple of traps and a minor encounter in here. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and flip through the, the monster manual, and I'm going to try and find a little something uh, that would work as an encounter um, leading up to the Chimera encounter. All right, so I flipped through the book a little bit, and I decided rather than throw another mythical creature at her because she is going to be fighting the Chimera, I decided to go with some good old-fashioned... Uh, human grunts here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a little bit of a, a bandit party at her with a couple of bandits, a bandit captain, and maybe a magic user of, uh, of some kind. So a pretty, you know, kind of minor, easy encounter. Um, I'll throw some environmental effects in there maybe um, to kind of liven it up a little bit. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and put uh, bandits... Uh, pillaging stronghold. So, you know, it's it's always a uh, an easy thing to have, you know, somebody who has gotten to the dungeon before the party, who is there already trying to gain access to the dungeon or, or, or loot the dungeon. So, bandits pillaging stronghold. Now, this is a pretty easy encounter, but what this is going to allow is this is probably going to be the first encounter of the session, I'm guessing. I'm not, you know, I'm not super positive yet, but because this is a, a new campaign setting and my fiance is going to be playing a, a higher level character than she's probably used to in fifth edition at least um, this will give her a chance to try out her abilities try out some spells really kind of stretch her muscles a little bit in this new character of alkaya and get a sense for her before i throw her at the chimera okay so bandits pillaging stronghold so i'm just going to put uh bandits captain and mage so that'll you know that'll be um some some crazy stuff going on there and I'll, you know i'll throw a few environmental effects in there um some different objects and features that she can interact with uh during the encounter so uh, <coughs> oh excuse me and then i'm also going to put um traps uh maybe a pit trap and a flame trap I'll kind of intermingle those uh, in the dungeon somewhere. Let's see, what else can we can we do with this? This is already seeming like a pretty good, robust little thing, but I want to I want to put some sort of a puzzle or riddle in here. So what I might do is I might just do a really simple like elemental puzzle. Or something similar to that. So, you know, maybe she has to um, uh, get a, get a certain uh, item or a certain key that corresponds to an elemental symbol on a door. If she can get the door open, there's some loot inside. Maybe you know a couple of minor magic items or some gold or something like that. So, just a little something to uh, to break up the you know between the encounters uh, in this stronghold. So, it's going to be a fairly small dungeon. I imagine when I when I map it out uh, during the session, it'll be just a few rooms, but it'll end with the chimera encounter and what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to have in the room with the chimera the ceiling is going to be collapsed so that's how the chimera gets in and out of its uh of its uh um nest it, it you know can fly in from the from the top and, and fly out so <clears throat> So there we have a little bit, a little dungeon here. And again, I'm going to improv a lot of this. This is just kind of the, the stuff that I want to include. And a lot of it's just going to sort of happen on the fly during the session. The next thing I want to plan out here is the river homestead. Now, I've already decided that there's going to be a sick person here, sick guy. And I think it's going to be a half elf. Um, but what I'm thinking is maybe <clears throat> maybe this guy or his family is sick and um, you know they need a certain um, type of herb or something like that that can be found 
in the Katakti stronghold. So it gives um, Alkaya a little bit more incentive to, to get there. So um, let me go ahead and put uh, Katakti, oops, spelled my own word wrong. Katakti herb, and I'm just gonna name the herb. Um, It's the allos root, which grows <clears throat> in places where blood has been spilled unjustly. All right. That's an idea. Going back to the Katakti stronghold, I just came up with something. I'm going to have um, slaves' quarters in this stronghold. And that is where Alkaya is going to find this Allos root, um, where blood has been spilled unjustly in the slaves' quarters of the stronghold. Okay. So um, let's see here. So the guy's name, let's roll for his name. All right, so the guy's name is going to be Cyrus. <clears throat> and he's going to be a, let's see. Let's roll for it, huh? <clears throat> so using the non-player character tables in the Dungeon Master's Guide, I went ahead and I rolled up some stuff for Cyrus. So I uh, wrote that he has braided brown hair. He's agile yet dull. He knows Shade, which um, Shade is Thieves' Cant in SGS. So right there, when I rolled that he knew Thieves' Cant, I knew that this guy used to be some sort of rogue or thief or bandit. And so right there, I know some more about him. I rolled that he fidgets a lot and is suspicious. Uh, for his ideal, I rolled people, which is interesting to me. You know, this guy cares about people, the well-being of people. So I think even though he used to be a thief or a bandit, at his heart, he's a good guy. Um, he's protective of a keepsake, which that keepsake, I'm going to go ahead and roll on the trinkets table for what that is. And for his secret or flaw, I uh, roll that he has a powerful enemy. So right there, Cyrus is a really interesting character. Um, and I think what I might do is if Alkaya manages to save him to get this root that he needs to live. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Maybe I need some of that root. Um, he might end up coming with her and becoming an ally of hers, a little bit of a hireling uh, that will journey with her and um, and go on adventures and whatnot. All right, for this guy's um, trinket, so this keepsake, I got knucklebone dice. Knucklebone dice with skull symbols on them. So I'm thinking that is maybe a leftover from his life as a thief, which is uh, pretty interesting. So, so there we go. There's a little bit of a an, in, an intermediary encounter, so to speak, a social encounter. You know, you always want to make sure that you're um, including all three pillars of D and D, which is uh, combat, exploration, and interaction. So this is more of an interaction uh, type thing. Uh, the stronghold is definitely exploration and combat. And this Granazi settlement is going to be exploration and interaction. All right, so the thing about this Granazi settlement is I already know that it is a gnomish settlement. Um, with lots of devices and technology. Okay, now, <clears throat> what I'm thinking here is somebody in this settlement needs to have a reason for Alkaya going to the stronghold, um, whether it be, you know, uh, here's what I'm thinking. So earlier, I rolled these three dice for the Granazi settlement, right? And I had this thing with the plane, and I had this idea for the mass transit thing. So what I'm thinking is the gnomes here have developed a way um, to create a flying machine, a Da Vinci-style flying machine, an ornithopter, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write ornithopter. Okay, so it's not, not mass transit, but it's an easier way to travel. So the gnomes have developed an ornithopter, but every time they go to test it, Chimera shows up. Okay, They need somebody, a hero, a paragon of Eschia, to rid the skies of this vile Chimera so that they can test and perfect their ornithopter. So... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll up an NPC who is the designer, the main designer of the ornithopter. So here we go. So I did a little bit of rolling and fleshing out here. I decided that the settlement's name was Ipsy, that it was uh, populated by mostly gnomes, halflings, and humans. The gnomes are the engineers, the halflings, and SGR are the traders, the brokers, and uh, you know humans are just about everywhere in the setting. Uh, so again, the ornithopter, the chimera, keeps destroying it. Now, I decided that the gnomus engineer's name was Gaios, and Gaios is uh, a gnomish engineer. He wears formal, clean clothes. He's intelligent but clumsy. He's great with puzzles. He whistles and hums absently, is sort of irritable. His ideal is knowledge. He's dedicated to his life goal, the ornithopter, and he has possession of forbidden lore. Um, I also rolled that uh, this settlement was a major trade center. Now, with these three things, I have a great framework for an adventure, especially a one-off adventure. Now, if I was running, say, a campaign, uh, I would have multiple plot hooks within the settlement of Ipsy. I would have multiple quests or missions that the PCs would be able to do. So it would require a little bit more prep on my part. But again, the same model applies. Now, I, can't, I really can't stress enough that you really have to find a method that works for you. Um, my method, like I said, it varies. It's adaptable. I do it a little different almost every time I prep. I do what feels right, what feels good. Um, what works for me being creative. Um, in this case, I came into uh, the session prep with very little um, ideas. All I wanted was a way to involve the chimera, the creature of the chimera, um, because I thought it would be a good uh, sort of encounter uh, within this campaign setting. And from there, you know, I took, what, 30, 45 minutes here um, and came up with a, I think, a pretty fun session that is going to be fun for both me and the player. Um, it's got a lot of room for improv, a lot of room for uh, creative problem solving and direction on my part and, uh, and the player's part. So I think it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. It's got a good mix of social interaction, exploration, combat. Um, I'm looking forward to it. So um, I hope this helped you get some ideas about what to do to enhance your prep and make it more efficient. Um, make your time uh, better spent doing things that are going to pay off in the end. You know, if you are the type of dungeon master that sits and writes pages and pages and pages of prep, that is fine. More power to you. If that works for you, if you get good sessions out of that, if you have fun doing it, then by all means do it. I know I harp on, you know, don't over prep. You want to be, you know, you want to work smarter, not harder, that kind of stuff. But Hey, if you want to sit there and you want to write out all that prep, that is totally fine. You got to do what works for you. This works for me. I am an improv DM. I like being able to fill in the blanks. I like being able to fill in the cracks. So anyway, guys, um, I will be doing more prep videos in the future. I'm hoping to do some filming of me prepping uh, the Provoker session, which is going to be an inc uh, entirely different process because it's, you know, a, a long running campaign. It's online. Um, so it's going to be a very, very different process of that. So uh, anyway, guys, that's going to be it from me. Take care and happy gaming all.